as our times are uh, constantly changing, our thinking has to change and our professions must change as well. From the first industrial revolution to the second, from the second to the third, we are constantly moving forward. And this distribution industry is also moving on from the mom and pops to large discount stores and franchise brands, which take up every corner of the streets. Thus, there's no room for individual businesses to survive. The distribution industry is also no exception to this kind of trend. Ordinary people keep losing their jobs and their living ground. Not too long ago, ordinary people or middle-class lives were not too bad. However, the middle class is slowly collapsing to become helplessly poor. And the upper class is becoming richer and richer. The polarization is deepening, leaving only the top echelon of the population to survive. Only the top tier can survive. In the old days, middle tiers lived quite nicely. Now those ranks are disappearing. So we have no choice but to enter the top tier or go all the way down to the bottom. The bottom line is that we must succeed and become the top tier. The distribution industry is one area where we, the ordinary people, can still partake. However, even this industry is becoming dominated by these big corporations and big capital who are taking more and more of the money than ordinary people can ever afford to spend. While those big corporations pile up their capital, created by the money spent by the little people, the capital doesn't even circulate among everyone. That's why we little people should be in charge of this distribution industry. Up until now, those big corporations made money off of us. But from now on, we must create a system where the money circulates amongst us. We ordinary people should unite and take care of this distribution business on our own. We will choose better quality goods at better prices and share amongst ourselves the advertising expenses and profit that big corporations used to reap from us. The pioneering company at the front of such a movement, the most innovative and conscientious business out there, is none other than us, Atomy. You've just found that out. We're living in a time when we, the ordinary people, must carry out mass capitalism for our own sake. Capitalism for the ordinary. Mass capitalism is what we at Atomy strive to achieve. And here, you are facing that company. Just because you ran into such a business uh, doesn't mean that success is going to be guaranteed to everyone, but you are the one who can determine your success and decide what to do for that goal. First and foremost, you must believe that you will become a successful person. Of course, many people think that they will and want to succeed. However, if you dig down deep, people don't really have a concrete idea about what success is. Unfortunately, uh, more of them go through failing lives after learning and working for 30 years with the goal of becoming rich. Despite working hard day and night, by the age of 60, only 1% of us are rich. 4% of us are financially okay. 15% have passed away and 10% live barely making ends meet. They're basically living hand to mouth. The bottom line is that 70% of us meet our retirements poor and without adequate preparation. Average old days for most people are about 30 years, and they are reportedly going to get much longer. If we meet our retirement without adequate preparation, our old days will be marred by so many crises due to poverty and sickness. It is critical that we think of ways to properly prepare for our old days. While we can still move around, we must come up with measures to adequately prepare for our retirement within three to five years at the greatest. Otherwise, only poverty and sickness will be waiting for us in our old days. Why is it that only 1% are successful 
and 99% fail and live miserably. Andrew Carnegie thought about this very seriously and found out that most people just didn't know how to succeed. He became resolute to teach people about the law of success. The law of success is not some arbitrary decision of one person, but a predetermined principle that's been naturally established, such as the true north principle and other natural laws. Therefore, if you follow the law, you will succeed, and if you don't, you won't succeed. Just as the farmer, who must follow nature's laws, in order to succeed in farming, for us to succeed, we must follow the law of success. Therefore, we must think about the very first step that the farmer does in his endeavor. This is none other than thinking in his mind what he wants to harvest and how much. For example, if he wants to harvest 10 tons of rice, he will make all the decisions based on that 10 tons of rice. How big a rice paddy should be, how much rice seed is required, when to sow, and other plans are all decided by what and how much he wants to reap during harvest time. If you choose other crops, such as peanuts or potatoes, the field, the ground, when to sow, and how to grow will have to be determined by a completely different method. Again, the very first step a farmer takes before he does anything is to think of how much of what crop he wants to reap. Likewise, you are farming our life projects, just like the farmer. Therefore, you must have the goal in your heads for what you want to be three to five years from now. However, the reality is that you don't really have those images in your heads just yet. You don't know concretely what you should be doing and what sort of work you should be taking on. To make matters worse, you get lost without a direction to follow. That's why even three to five years later, your lives will still be messy and not satisfactory. The bottom line is that you must create very clear and concrete images of a successful you in your heads. The second part of our company motto is create the vision. Right, create the vision. In order to make any decision on how to become successful, you must have a vision of you in your head. Creating the vision of a successful you is much harder than you assume. Not only should you be rich, you also need to be healthy, want to live long, be generous to others, and want to get respect from others as well. Those are the elements of a successful life. Why do we need all of those? It's because humans are complex beings. What are we made up of? First, there's flesh, which is our body. Then there's spirit and soul. The last is our environment. What our flesh, spirit, soul, and environment need are all different, and we must satisfy them all in a balanced way. Only then can we become successful. If one condition is satisfied, but another isn't, it is not considered a successful life. First of all, there are things that our bodies need. We want to live our lives healthily. We want to live a long life in a healthy way. Even if you are healthy, but die abruptly in your sleep, this is also problematic. We want to take care of our fundamental needs and live in a rich and leisurely way. You won't be able to die in peace if you lived poorly all your life. In essence, our body has a desire to live long and healthy. That is the desire to live well. Next is our spirit. Most people don't really distinguish the spirit from the soul, but they are actually very different. When the Creator God made our bodies from dust and blew the spirit into it, 
the soul gave us life. A living soul came into life. After all, we are the combination of a body made from dust and God's Spirit, which entered our body and turned it into a living soul. Then, how should we differentiate the spirit from the soul? Generally speaking, animals don't have this spirit. Only humans have spirit and soul. Among many spiritual aspects is conscience, for example. Simply put, animals don't have conscience. A dog in your neighborhood bites a passerby. The dog doesn't suffer in conscience or feel guilty, right? Have you ever seen a dog feeling conflicted? Dogs will never do that. Again, animals don't have spirit. In addition, they lack a sense of time. Only humans were given the love for spirit according to the Bible. God gave us the love for spirit. For example, monkeys don't look back at their lives while getting old and regret their lives while on their deathbeds. Have you ever seen a monkey doing that? No monkeys will ever do that. They have no thoughts. Despite the resemblance to us in appearance, they never look for God. God is also a spiritual aspect. Animals don't look for God or observe rituals. Humans, on the other hand, uh, no matter how primitive they might be, yearn for something or some being to count on, and therefore they believe in God. In the end, uh, humans want to live in clear conscience, to live a long life, to love and to be loved. Where should this love come from? This love must come from the Creator God. Otherwise, we are doomed to feel lonely and empty. Again, our common desires are to live conscientiously, to live long, to love, and to be loved. Soul encompasses an intellectual desire to know the unknown. Know the unknown. Intellectual desire and joy, anger, sadness, and pleasure. We want to live our lives in peace. This emotional aspect falls into this category. Again, uh, humans have a desire to learn about the unknown. Also, we are now living in natural and social environments. Another desire for us is that we want to contribute to our environment. We do have the desire to contribute to our surroundings. If unable to make these dreams come true, we won't be able to die peacefully. Let's say you didn't live a healthy life. Would you be able to live in peace? Never. Whether you lived a rich life or a poor life, you would never be able to die peacefully. Therefore, you must satisfy all these requirements while still living. Also, if you didn't live in clear conscience, your death will surely be regretful. Next, our desire includes eternal life. No matter how satisfying your life may have been, there's bound to be something unresolved on your deathbed. Dying at 90, you won't say, I've lived enough. Dying at 100, you won't say, I no longer want to live. No one will say enough. To summarize, we want to love and to be loved. Next is our intellectual desire, which is spiritual. Dying without learning is regretful. Also, we want to live peacefully and harmoniously with others. Hateful lives will lead to regretful deaths. Next, we want to live benefiting our nature and our society. If you think of yourself as worthless to others and to the environment, while on your deathbed, your life will be wasted and you will die full of regrets. In the end, a life that satisfies all four of these aspects is called a balanced life. The bottom line is that when you set up a life goal 
as to what kind of person you want to become. You must include everything that will satisfy all four of these aspects in a balanced way. Where are you going to set that goal? You should paint it in your heads. Some people go like this. Why is this so complicated? Why doesn't that guy teach how to make quick money? This is too much of a headache. I see that many people don't like complicated things. Interestingly, one common thing among those who hate complicated stuff is that they are all poor. It's because the money that is in simple places has already been taken. Then where's the money? It's in complicated places. I want you to live a successful life and to make money. Then you ought to listen to my complicated lectures and find your place here and there within my stories and build a comfort zone for yourself. This lazy attitude you immediately have upon listening to my complex lecture is a big no-no. <laughs> Again, you want to live a lifestyle that meets all four of these aspects in a balanced way. The truth is that all four of these conditions are not separate, but intricately intertwined. First of all, to live well, a physical need. Right? Next, to love. This is a spiritual aspect. Next, to learn is an aspect of the soul. To contribute. If all of these needs are disparate, they will be meaningless. For instance, some people go, well, what's the big deal about living well? What's the point of having a big house? The real reason we need to live well is not for yourself, but for your loved ones. That's the real reason why. Because your life is terrible, your children will also be down and out. Your parents are worried about you. Your siblings are in constant squabbles. The most common cause of sibling rifts is that they can't repay debt that they've borrowed in hard times. Monetary exchanges amongst siblings are the number one cause of strife. However, if you live a cushy life, you can just give your help away. I repeat, the real reason for us to live well is for the people that we love and care about. Even between a husband and a wife, poverty can destroy the love and the relationship. For a couple who loves each other dearly, the relationship can fall apart. Many couples simply live together as strangers. The husband and the wife just cohabitate. Divorce is too much trouble and too much hassle. They don't even love or care for each other anymore. They just stay together. What a pain in the neck it is to get divorced. So they just live together. Many people do. I too was once madly in love with my wife. We went out for about one year before getting married and we were happy together. I missed my wife all the time. Sometimes I missed her even while we were still wow. together. <laughs> once our relationship was put to a serious test, we were no longer so lovey-dovey. My business went bankrupt. I was a failure and I became riddled with illness. My whole family was down and out. We had to live in a $500 a month rent place. $500 gets you a decent place in rural areas, but in Seoul, it was quite shabby. After living in a place like that for about three years, she was determined to tell me something. Husband, let's divorce after the boys finish high school. She didn't look particularly resolute or determined. She said that with an expressionless face. 
However, for my part, I was devastated. The love of my life was telling me that she was leaving. I clung to her legs and I cried my heart out for 30 minutes. Darling, I can't let you go now. If you leave me now, you won't have anything for your old days. I will get you a house and some money in the bank, I swear. Then you can go. I wept for half an hour holding onto her legs. Then she looked at me like this and said, right, maybe in a million years. <laughs> I have bought her a house and I filled her bank account. But she still hasn't told me when she's going to be leaving. <laughs> Poverty breaks even love. Just for the sake of loving relationships, we must live well. Think about your parents, who are constantly worried about you. And they want nothing more in the world than for you to live well. One day, my mother called me and said, Son, it's my time to go. What's going on, mother? That's when I was really struggling. Despite struggling so terribly, I never failed to send her money. I knew my mother wouldn't suffer because my brothers would still be able to help her out. However, I knew that she would be worried to death if I hadn't sent her any pocket money thinking that I must be in very dire straits. If I managed to send her some money, she would think her son wasn't on the verge of death and somehow was able to manage, so that's what I had to do. One day she called me, son, I finally need to go. It turns out she had found out from my brothers how I was really doing. She learned that I was doing very badly but still sending her money despite my terrible hardship. She couldn't contain herself. That was the hardest time of my life. After talking on the phone, I couldn't contain myself either. So I said this to her. Mom, I'm trying to get back on my feet. Mom, aren't you the one who will be the happiest once I do get back on my feet? Right, son. I will dance in the street. Mom, despite my hardships now, I'm going to get back on my feet, and I want you to be here to see it. Only when I know for sure that you will be there to congratulate me will I have the courage to even try to get back on my feet. That is why you must live. She said, nothing would make me happier than seeing you get on top again. I must go on living to see you get back up there. That's what she said to me. Parents are one of the reasons we must live well. They constantly worry about their children. Not because they want something from them, but because they want to see their children live well. Only after seeing us living well can they die a peaceful death. At least for that, we must live nicely. To live well, we must learn. From this, to live well, our passion comes along. Those who don't have passion, whose hearts are not burning with passion, they don't have love in their hearts. Those who do have love in their hearts, they go on trying to live a good life, at least for the ones that they love, their families and their children. The leaders amongst you are the ones who have stronger love for your loved ones. It's true that our leaders are indeed great wife lovers, amazing husband lovers, and are the nicest parents to their children. What they said they are most happy about is that they are respected, loved, and trusted by their families. They rejoice in the fact that their families became closer and happier than ever. The biggest joy in life is not really acknowledgement and respect by others. We'd much rather be recognized and appreciated by our husbands, 
our parents, our children, and our wives. That's the joy that we truly seek. From the love for our family comes genuine passion. Those who have no passion have no love in their hearts. We must rekindle that love in our hearts. That's why we need to live well, to love, to be loved, to learn, and to contribute to our environment. You need to envision that in your heads like a cinema. All it takes is to simply dream about such a life in our heads? That's right. That's all it takes. The effect has been scientifically proven. Once you are able to envision such a dream in your head, vividly and earnestly, as if it were a movie, your body will begin to experience changes. One of our brain's little quirks is that it can't distinguish fantasy from reality, not on an instinctual level. It means our bodies respond regardless. We can't tell apart what's going on in our heads and what's actually happening in the world. Just by imagining that you are living in a fancy house, riding in the car of your dreams, helping out relatives, and donating to charities, your appearance, your way of speaking, and your facial expressions will all change. Why don't we try that right now? I'm going to put a big handful of red, sweet, and sour pomegranate seeds into your mouths. You're going to chew and chomp on those pomegranate seeds. Sour and sweet pomegranate juice will flood into your mouths. What just happened inside your mouths? You salivated. If you didn't, you should go see a doctor. Normal people should salivate in this case. Even if you don't eat real pomegranate, your body should respond as if you did just by imagining it. I'm talking about something scientific and realistic. It all depends on what we think with our heads to change our bodily reactions. I can immediately fix everyone's heavy feeling problem that happens every morning that they get up. If I deposited $30,000 every month in your bank accounts or $1,000 every day, would your body feel like an anvil or like a feather? <laughs> your fatigue would just disappear like that. What should you do then? Imagine money being deposited into your account. Your body will be fooled and it will change. Your body thinks this is actually happening. The same phenomenon will take place. Thinking of making money and doing atomy. If your only wish is to make $500 or $1,000 when starting this business, you'd be lucky to sell a few toothbrushes here and there with no energy invested. On the other hand, if you imagine yourself doing a business making thirty or $50,000 a month, from the get-go, your voice, your facial expression, and your appearance couldn't become more different. Even when making a phone call, your voice would be full of confidence. Listen up. I'm telling you in no uncertain terms. I've just begun doing the Atomy business. And I'm debating whether I should include you or not. I still have some feelings for you. So I'm calling you. So you'd better listen up. This is the attitude that you should have. I will be making $50,000 a month. If you want to join in, you can do the same. This is not child's play. Take a deep breath. You will pay great attention to me. This is how you should be going about things. Who's going to whom? You'd better tell them that they should come to you. Your attitude should be different. Simply put, depending on what you envision in your head, your attitude and everything else will be different. Once, all I had was a beat up old van worth $2,500. I was penniless. However, 
Once I made up my mind to do this business, I said to myself that I will give it my best shot. If this company is rolling on as planned, it will become a world-class business. At the bankrupt duck meat restaurant, our imperial master, Jungsoo Park, used to run, we had our first seminar. How many were there? There were 17 of us. To those 17 people, I spoke for five hours. That we would become a world-dominating business. That they would live in the best houses in that city and pay the highest taxes as well. I also told them that if they become a royal master, they would receive a cash bonus of $50,000. And if they reached the higher crown master status, they would get $300,000 and a luxury sedan. The president, who was saying he would give out a luxury sedan, drove a $2,500 minivan. Still, he said that he would give out a luxury sedan and $300,000 cash bonus. I said an Imperial Master would get a million dollars. I told them they would get a Mercedes S-Series, which they wouldn't even need to drive themselves. A chauffeur and a personal assistant would be there for them to get in and out of the car. That will be one strict company rule an Imperial Master must keep. Okay, so that would sound pretty plausible if you were to hear something like that in a large venue like this, whether you actually believed it or not, right? However, think about 17 people all huddled up in a shabby place listening to a shabby businessman talking about a million dollars in personal assistance. The owner drove himself because there was no driver. From the very beginning, I was the president. With only one employee, my brother as VP. The title on my business card was president too. How so? I knew from the beginning that I would become the president of a world-class corporation. Looking back at the 17-person seminar, it was truly a tall tale, to be honest with you. Those who believed in me and followed me are even more unbelievable. Look at what happened to those crazy people. All of them are rich and successful now. Those who are here, listen to me and follow me will also make thirty to $50,000 in three to five years. You will be able to enjoy an elevated status as a father, as a husband, and as a wife. Those who believed in this ridiculous business and came together have become who they are today. What I emphasize here is that you ought to have a clear, big goal while doing this Atomy business. You must be committed. Your goals must blow your minds away. Think of $50,000 being deposited every month into your account. Would this drive you wild or not? Those believing in that wild dream will make it. However, those in their most alert mind thinking, yeah, right, $50,000 a month, I would die for two to 3000 a month, yeah? How the heck am I going to make that kind of money? That will never happen in my life. If you believe that so firmly, then it will never happen. Your dead set belief that you will never make over two to $3,000 a month will set your life exactly the way that you believe it. Those believing they'll make 30 to 50,000 a month will just have that come true for them. And those who believe they can't make more than two or $3,000 a month will only have that come true. Why will you make only two or $3,000? It's because you only believe in that. Among those royal masters sitting over there, some of them really make me scratch my head. If they are indeed making 30 to 50,000 a month. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Former bus driver, please stand up.
Such a handsome gentleman like him. He used to drive buses for nine months after signing up with Atomy. Did he look smart to me or not? He really didn't come across as very smart. Now, of course, he has all my respect. Of course. In the beginning, though, he really didn't impress me. Finally, he put two and two together. What is the only thing you have to do? Just change the way that you think. Sure, he's always been handsome. Nothing has really changed much. What has changed? He has changed from a nighttime bus driver to someone making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year simply because he changed his attitude. Again, depending on your way of thinking, your life can be transformed. I can't stress enough how important it is to change your thinking. How much should you change? Only if you have some fantastic objectives will you change yourselves drastically. If you just keep telling yourselves two or three thousand dollars, sure, making two to three thousand dollars for the rest of your life really isn't that bad. Let's say a household has a five hundred dollar increased income monthly. Get a used car so that you don't need to ride any more buses. An extra five hundred dollars can bring such a change. Imagine a new wardrobe from an extra five hundred dollars monthly. You'd be a fashionista. Think about five hundred dollars worth of groceries more. Your table would be a gourmet. Five hundred dollars is a sizable increase. Honestly speaking. However, it's not a big enough increase to make you go wild. That's why your pictures should be something that will drive you wild. Poor people have the wrong idea about making money. This is one of the myths they believe. They mistakenly think that it gets harder as you make more money. They think making ten thousand dollars must be a lot harder than making one thousand dollars, or that making a hundred thousand dollars is ten times harder than making ten thousand dollars. Likewise, they think making a hundred thousand dollars should be a hundred times harder than making one thousand dollars. If you ask those who actually make that much money, that's not true. One that earns a thousand dollars a month thinks his job is very hard. One with ten thousand thinks his job is pretty doable. Those who are making over a hundred thousand dollars a month, what do they really think about money? They think that money is everywhere, and making money is as easy as A B C. Money is not something that gets harder as you make more. Who has it the toughest? Those who earn three to seven thousand dollars a month work and fight the hardest, as they have to compete with the smartest. Very few people assume that they will make thirty to seventy thousand dollars a month. That area is rather competitionless. It's the blue ocean. That's how money works. Money. Is not something that gets harder as you make more of it. Next, we have so many uses for spending money. Foremost, you want to buy a house, not just a place of dwelling, but a decent place to live. You need hundreds of thousands, or even a few million dollars, to save up that much. How much should you save monthly? A little math reveals a ton of savings. Buy a house at death. You need one in three to five years. To buy a house in three years, you must save a lot of money fast. In thirty years, I don't see many of you here still being alive. In fifty years, most of you here is going to be gone. Do the math. If you save up one or two thousand dollars every month, it will take thirty to fifty years to buy a house. What's the point in buying a house at death? You must buy a house, not just any, but a nice one, within three to five years. The same goes for a car. Fancy cars don't go well with the old and decrepit. Things have to happen in a short period of time. If you want to play golf or go on sightseeing in nice places, you'd better have a working set of legs. 
If you limp around with knee joint problems and you can't see anything with your old eyes, what's the point of taking trips? Your mouth without teeth can't chew the delicious native food. What's the point of having riches then? You want to have fun while you are able and healthy with working teeth and see things properly with a working set of eyes. Old people don't enjoy flying. They get dizzy when riding on an airplane. That's why you need to do this math quickly and be done with making money within three to five years. Otherwise, you'll all become failures. That's the way to go. Also, you want to live a giving life. Why don't you buy a house for each of your children? On average, people have two kids, so you need three houses. Right? Our children are entering a tougher time than we had to live through. They will have it tougher. It was difficult to afford a house in our generation. It's impossible in their generation. That's why we need to get them a house while we can in this generation. Look at how much time we have spent in our lives just to buy our houses. It took 20 years to finally own a decent place. Would you like to have your children go through the same thing? That's why we need to get a house for each of them. Don't worry about how much your daughter-in-law brought in for your family. Give her $50,000 saying, I know this isn't very much, but you should be able to get a car now. I know you and your husband are struggling with just one car. If you did that, would she become a fantastic daughter-in-law or not? She would call you mom, not Mrs. So-and-so. The gap would disappear. And there would be no squabbling amongst family members. Don't you want to be decent parents? Husbands should get nice things for their wives and wives for their husbands. Gentlemen, please don't make your wives do these three things. Cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Did you marry a maid? Ladies, don't do those three things either. Cooking, cleaning, and laundry. You should stop doing those chores so that your neighbor lady, who's not an Atomian, can do it for her own livelihood. In this high employment time, you are taking away her job opportunity and having a bad influence on the national economy. By sending away those jobs out of your households, we can create more jobs and share the benefits. For that goal, you should not be doing those three chores. With just $1,000 a month, you can have freedom from all those household chores. To do just that, you need to make twenty to 30000 a month. You're invited to the wedding of your nephew who is struggling. Why not give $30,000 instead of a penny pinching two or $300? Wouldn't that make you a proud aunt? Try giving $30,000 in advance. You, his aunt, will look more beautiful to him than the bride. If we ever want to live our lives freely and in style, we must have money, a lot of it. If you do a little math, indeed, you need 20, 30, 40, even $50,000 a month. That way, you can live in style. How do we become rich? First, you set your spending and then your income. This is not how we learn things at school. We were taught to spend based on our income, right? However, those who spend based on their income are usually poor, almost everybody. People who save pennies over everything will never become rich. Here is how you become rich. First of all, don't think about your income. What expenses you're going to need should be decided first. Then, you should decide what kind of work you will need to do to make those expenses. Let's say you need $50,000. Will the job making $30,000 cut it for you? You shouldn't even bother with it. How about a job making $10,000? Just forget it. 
You should reject those opportunities so that you can find one for $50,000. When you look for a job, first set your spending goal and then choose a job. Too many people are doing jobs that will never make them rich. They do jobs making two, three, five, or six thousand dollars repeatedly and fruitlessly. Their time of youth nears the end, and they go about complaining about their hopeless lives. Not true. They chose those hopeless jobs. With those jobs making four, five, or seven thousand dollars get you to retirement, they will not. If you make less than seven thousand dollars a month in Korea, after spending money on your children's education, you can barely afford to live in a house. Rather, you're going to be drowning in debt. Three or $4,000 a month is only going to put you in the red. Such a job will get you nowhere. Yet you're hopelessly clinging to it. If you make $3,000 while your neighbor makes $2,000, you're doing better than him, but you guys are both being foolish. I'm telling you that you must have a detailed, concrete plan that will make you rich and set for retirement. According to my math, Anything under $30,000 a month is not acceptable. When setting up your goals, you must produce a movie inside your head in which you're living your dream life. Then your body will change according to such a scenario. You'll be given a template for so-and-so's life scenario tonight. I expect everyone to fill it out tonight. The template looks like this. With a circle and gauges in it. You'll see many smaller circles like these. All of these elements must go in those circles and every one must be included. First of all, your health. You can write down something like long life. To live a cushy life, clothing, food, and housing must be taken care of. Clothing and food are not really our concerns, so housing goes in here. Next is to love. Parents. Charity work. Right there. Next, to learn. Children's education can go in there. For to contribute, volunteer work can go in there. What else is there? Some people love to travel. A good life has to have a nice car. Next is cash. Some people will want to pay off their debt. And some write donation to church. You can write these down freely. No matter what, all of the items must be included at least once. To contribute includes charity work. To learn, can include not only our children's education, but your own. Next, to love has caring for parents or even charity work and live long or long life. Once these items are set, there are gauges set up to 10. These gauges should indicate your current status. If you are born with good health, give yourself an eight. For housing, if your dream house is 3,000 square feet with five bedrooms, but you're currently renting a 1,200 square foot house, you're right here. For your parents, your heart was always there. Charity work doesn't even exist. Children's education, they took care of themselves. No decent trips. You don't like your car. Cash is nearly zero. Finally, you're going to connect all the dots. Once connected, this circle represents your life. If this circle is small and crooked, you can consider it not running very smoothly. What should you do to make these dots all perfect tens? What needs to be done? Once they become all tens, the shape becomes one perfect round circle. One large round circle of life can run smoothly. To accomplish that, you'll be writing here what you should be doing for good health. What kind of house is your dream house? What to do for your parents and for charity work? What to do for your children? And for travel, what kind of car? And how much cash you will need in a very detailed, 
and specific way. You must quantify all these items. Cash. Don't just write the more the better. House. Don't write the bigger the better. For example, a 3,000 square foot house. Speaking of quantifying, write down prices. One million dollars. Also, you want to write these in steps by specifying due dates. Caring for parents. Specify how. Not just be nice to my mother. Call mother weekly. In addition, when it comes to parents, don't give them pocket money, but support their living expenses. Those who think giving two or three hundred dollars is enough, think again. Old people need a lot of money now more than ever. Why not give them two or three thousand dollars? That way, they can go see doctors, pay for living expenses, hang out with their friends, brag about their children, and go on occasional travels. They want to live in style too. How can they do all of that with pocket money of only two or three hundred dollars? Therefore, you'll write, "I'll give my folks two thousand dollars a month." Write things out specifically like this for charity work. I will do one hour of personal services. I will donate one or two thousand dollars monthly. Write them out specifically like this. Next, for your children's education, how much money will be spent on what lessons? For travels, when and where you'll be going, plus the travel expenses will be how much. For your car, be specific. A Mercedes, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. What color? Black. Write out all these details. When are you buying it by? Put a photo of that car in your bathroom. Just put it up on the wall. Stop by at a dealer, and do a test drive. So you wrote down this and that goal in your life scenario. You dream of yourself living such a fancy life. In your imagination, you fall in love with yourself. To be that very person, the hardship you're experiencing is nothing. You'll have a different attitude. After all these careful calculations, in order to accomplish all these things, you must have a thirty to fifty thousand dollar monthly income. As a matter of fact. Those who have really made it are actually earning thirty to fifty thousand dollar monthly incomes. Some make even more. Don't compare yourself to the neighbor ladies and feel happy because your husband makes a thousand dollars more than her husband makes. You shouldn't be doing that. The monetary goal must be your absolute goal. In order for you to live a life that you really want to live, how much will be needed? Not because you have more than others, but because your absolute goal is achieved. Another consideration for the goal: you must set a minimum as well. Tell yourself you're going to make at least how much. Please set that up. That's not all. You must set a maximum too. You must say that you will not keep more than a certain amount for yourself. That way, you can give some money away. We talked about having a million dollars cash. What are you going to do when you have two million dollars? Will you then give away some when you have two million dollars? Donation must become a habit. If you think about donating after making two million dollars, you will start seeing people with five or ten million dollars. You'll be embarrassed by your one million dollars. A guy who owning a building in a ritzy area that is fifteen stories high, he's. Always saying how embarrassed he is. His building is worth over twenty million dollars. Why is he embarrassed? Next to his building are high rises worth hundreds of millions of dollars. That's why he's so embarrassed to death, even owning a twenty million dollar building. This is what happens when you compare yourself to others. Giving away things or helping out others is the furthest thing from these people's minds. That's why you need to know your maximum from the very beginning. I will not keep anything over X amount to myself. If you make more than the maximum, consider that surplus as marked for other people. That much is what the Creator God has given you to help others and represent Him in the best possible way. You must believe that you are God's steward.
Again, that's why you need to set up a ceiling. This is how you become truly rich. Without this ceiling, you will forever be a pauper. Those who don't know how to help others or how to give to others are not truly rich, no matter how much money they might have. I've shown you so far how to fill out the scenario. Let's look at some previous examples. Are you seeing these all right? You want to write yours as detailed as these. You will not make these just this month, but every month, if at all possible. If you visit our homepage, there's a section on how to write a life scenario where you can find templates or you can fill it in right there. Upon saving it, you can't erase it, but you must write a new one. Why is that? You are going to want to see how your dreams and your plans are evolving as you continue to go along. It will be good for you to see your own track record. You won't alter what's written, but you will make a new one. Our system allows you to keep a record. First things first, write one tonight. Take it to your home and announce it to your family. You will live in a 3,000 square foot home. You will drive a Mercedes. They need to help their parents out so their hardship is short lived. Announce to them that such a rosy future is waiting for them. However, those who can't and won't cannot last more than one month. The truth is that when they're here, they do dream these great dreams. But arriving at home, they wake up from those dreams. They need to be intoxicated with this dream for a long time to be able to achieve anything, but they wake up too soon. This boils down to a game of who is going to last longer soaked in this fantasy. If you just keep hanging in there, slowly, you will see some results popping up down there and are well on your way to ASM. Next stop is Diamond Master. Once you reach Diamond Master, the horizon will be much more clear before you and you will gain confidence that you will finally reach the top. Depending on how vividly, how earnestly, and how consistently you picture your dreams in your heads, your attitude in business, and in life will change, and everything will change for you. At long last, you will enter the dream you've had all this time. There's one more thing that you need to fill out. That is your mastership plans when you will become an ASM or DM, and making how much. First comers should ask your seniors who will gladly guide you. ASMs make 2,000, DMs make 5,000, SRMs 10,000, you will reach this mastership by when? Three-year-old plans, five-year-old plans, and your long-term plans. You can be one month premature or six months past due. It doesn't matter as long as you have set goals. Here, you can write your personal objectives and team objectives with your center buddies. It's a good idea to pair up with your colleagues at the center or in your sibling lines. For team objectives, you and your buddies put your heads together and devise plans to do your business together. The key to whether your dreams tonight can come true or not lies in your chances of reaching the first mastership. Once you manage to obtain your first mastership, the rest will come along in a big wave. That is, when the person below you becomes an ASM, you will become a DM. Once you manage to obtain your first mastership, the rest will come along in a wave all the way to Royal Master. You learn fair and square your way to the first rank. You will have wings to fly with. I know you are all very tired right now. Still, I sincerely wish that you will take advantage of this precious opportunity to turn your life around. 구독, 좋아요, 눌러주세요.